Apple and Tesla both reported at the end of August they're going to split their stocks. And the question is, should you buy them before or after the split? Or should you buy them at all? So I thought I'd take a look and answer this question for you guys. And the first thing I took a look at is how has the stock performed after it split in the past? So Tesla has never actually done a stock split before, but this isn't Apple's first time. It's actually Apple's fifth. We can actually take a look back at the price movements around the most recent splits in 2014 and 2015 and see what happened. When Apple announced a seven to one split in 2014, the price shot up immediately and then continued until a couple days after the split. In the next couple of days, the price slumped 3% but then resumed its upward track. If we go even further back to Apple's 2005 two to one split, the price followed a similar pattern. It immediately shot up after the announcement, and then after the actual split, we saw a 10% slump, but this time the price stayed down for another five months until it ended up shooting up over 120% by the end of the year. In both years, we can see the bump that forms between the stock split announcement and the slump that follows afterward in that the price tends to follow the trend it was on before the announcement was made. And looking at Apple's chart so far this year, we can see a familiar pattern. We see the immediate gain after the announcement and then a gentle round off. It seems like a reliable indicator the price is going to come back down after the split. If I had to guess, we could see a pullback to $440 to $450, which would be 110 to 113 post split. Now, if we look over at Tesla, it seems the price has driven straight up since the announcement. If we follow the trend that was occurring before the split was announced, I think we could see a pullback to the $1,500 range to the $1,600 range at best. But I'm much less confident about this guess. I don't think it's going to continue to rocket up like it has immediately after the split happens, but I'm not really sure that we're going to see a major slump either. Now, in theory, stock splits don't actually make any difference for what you're getting. Would you rather have one $20 bill or four $5 bills? The only meaningful difference is the price becomes more affordable to small investors who don't yet have access to fractional shares. But what is useful though, is if you're looking to buy shares of either Tesla or Apple, you can use the stock split to help time your entry point. Now, I don't make any decisions based off of how I think the stock price is going to move over the next month. What I do is I determine what I think a company is worth and then look for good opportunities to buy it at or below that level. There was an interesting study that was done in 2013 on stock price performance in the years after a split. They found that after a split, the company's price would outperform comparable companies by 9% which was shown with a statistical p-value of less than 0 0.0001. This just means how confident they were about this finding. So companies that split their stock outperformed consistently enough that this wasn't just an anomaly. Now, I do wonder if stock splits are really more of an indicator of a well-performing business and that performance ends up showing up in the share price or if the share price growth is actually just due to a different price for the shares. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'd be really interested to hear what everybody else has to say about this. So let's take a look at Apple and Tesla and find out what they're really worth and if now is a good opportunity to buy them. So Apple reported growing their revenue and net income from 65 billion and 14 billion to 260 billion and 58 billion between 2010 and 2019. That works out to 21% average revenue growth and 25% net income growth. Looking at the earnings per share, they grew 29% over the time period, but we do see a slowdown in the last few years where they only grew at about seven to 8%. By the end of 2020, analysts are projecting Apple to earn $13 per share, a 9% gain from 2019. Then at the end of 2021, $15.54, a 19% gain from 2020's projection. So I think Apple could sustain its growth going forward at about the 10 to 14% range. And I know this is kind of a wide number, but I'm really not sure about a specific number for Apple. It's difficult to tell exactly how much their services are going to end up contributing to them in the future and what the iPhone super cycle upgrades will do. But using this 10 to 14% number, that puts a fair PE range for Apple between 24 and 34. So if we use the $13 earnings projection that puts the 2020 forward valuation between 312 to 442 or 78 to 110 dollars post split using 2021's earnings forecast we get a valuation between 370 to 528 or 94 dollars to 132 post split so I would say that Apple, even after all the run-up, still seems to have some good upside left. And if there is any dip, I do think that it actually represents a buying opportunity. But I do feel like it is priced at the high end 
of its valuation range. So to get growth out of Apple, you're gonna have to hope that the earnings for 2022 and 2023 do show continued upside. So now let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla's revenue and net income between 2010 and 2019 started at 117 million and they lost 154 million. This grew to 24 billion in revenue while still losing 862 million in net income. But crazy enough, over the last four reported quarters between September 2019 to June 2020, they actually reported gains and ended up making $368 million over the last year. These gains match up pretty close to when the share price started to take off around October 2019. But because they just now hit positive earnings growth, we can't really use that to determine Tesla's growth rate. So instead, I'm gonna look at revenue growth. Their revenue grew at an insane 71% between 2010 and 2019, and I don't think 71 1% is likely to sustain, so I'm going to use what I feel like is a more conservative 30% growth rate for them. That comes out to a fair PE value of 130. So over the past 12 months, Tesla earned $2.07 per share, which puts the valuation between $270 per share or $54 post split. For the rest of 2020, analysts are projecting earning $8.70, which gives them a valuation of $1,131 or 226 post split. If we then look at 2021, we see an even bigger projection of $15.55, which gives them a 2021 upside of $2,022 per share or $404 post split. Now keep in mind these numbers are off a conservative 30% growth rate expectation and I think Tesla may outperform this number in the next couple of years. Now I've looked through their balance sheets and Apple has a debt to equity ratio of one and a half. And this looks like a reasonable number to me, especially since Apple's total debt is 112 billion and on-hand cash is 93 billion. If they wanted to get rid of that debt, they could easily. Tesla is in a pretty similar situation. Their debt to equity is about two, so a little high, but they have $15 billion in debt and $8 billion in cash. So right now I'm really not too concerned. So would I recommend buying Apple or Tesla before or after the stock split. I'm not really sure you could go wrong either way. Both are incredible businesses with incredibly bright futures. And while I could see the share price dipping a little bit after the stock split occurs, I do think that this represents a buying opportunity. So, I would rate both of these companies as buys. It's just a question of timing when it is that you want to get in. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If it did, please take a second to scroll down and hit the thumbs up button. It helps me grow the channel and makes all the hard work that I put into these videos worth it. Thanks for watching.